And my friend Julian Lennon was here last February having a party before the Grammys in LA and I was there. And, uh, just before I left the party, Julian asked me to meet this guy, Andrew. Mm. Um, so before I left, I met Andrew, nice guy, uh, spoke really great about writing music and whose influences were. And, you know, I just thought, you know, have you got anything I can listen to? And he sent me some, some music and I heard the music and I was, I was really interested in, in the way he wrote and the way he played. Not left-handed, he was really right-handed like Keith Richards, my Angus Young, or he wasn't this shit, you know, mm -hmm. which doesn't interest me. And I heard his voice and I went, ah, this is really new. And I thought, okay, I wasn't sure if this was going to be the new thing I wanted to be in, but I just wanted to try maybe writing with him. So he came to my house the following week, he lived in New York, and he came to my house and we, we wrote Chemical Rain and Solo the afternoon when he came. And the next day... Two songs in one of them. Yeah. And, and the next day, I called Jason and I said, where are you right now? And he said, actually, I'm in LA, because Jason lives in Florida. I said, that's fantastic. Are you free tomorrow? He said, I actually am free. So I said, how's about if I book a studio? Let me get back to you. So I called Jason at nine o'clock that night. I said, can you be in Burbank tomorrow at this studio, 11 o'clock? And he did. And we went in the studio that day. So within 24 hours, we wrote the songs. We now got Jason in the studio. We are recording two songs, which was the start of the new band. You know, that was 13 months ago. Sorry, you didn't you didn't plan anything. It just happened because I remember. I didn't plan. Yeah, because when uh, Black Country Communion disbanded, your fans were not sure what uh, you're gonna do next. Yeah, and then you know Jason stayed with you. Right. And uh, and I see this band as a continuation of Black Country Communion. Do you uh, see that as well? Um, it, it's a continuation that the Jason and I have continued, but the one thing that we successfully have done is we did not want keyboards. Mm -hmm. I didn't want a um, keyboard player because I wanted to go back to my roots with Trapeze. I wanted to go back to Zeppelin without Robert Plant, Who without Roger Daltrey. Cream, it's, really, it's one organic guitar, one organic bass, one drums in the middle and one lead vocal live. I wanted to record a live album with no... There's only so many John Lords and Keith Emerson's and Rick Wakeman's. Mm -hmm. There's only so many great keyboard players. I played with them all, you know. And I wanted to go back to my roots, which was being in a trio, which we, we did really well. Being Andrew so young, much younger right. than you and Jason, I mean, how did that influence the songwriting process of the album? I mean, did, what did he bring in the band that you missed before? Um, he was born in the early 90s, so I was quite shocked that he he grew up listening to Led Zeppelin and mm -hmm. The Who, you know, and so he, he sounds kind of like 1967, 1968, he's only born in 91. He didn't sound like anybody from the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. He sounded a little like John Frusciante and Jerry Cantrell, so he's got a little Jimmy Page and then all the way to the 90s to grunge, you know, so I hadn't played with anybody like that before. I'd been playing with Iommi and Blackmore and Bonamassa and, and, and people from you know that neighborhood, you know. So with Andrew, he's so young, but he had a really, really great right hand. Pete Townsend, rock, it's like one-handed. You know, you don't really remember too much going on. It's no, none of this stuff, you know. So it was important for me to have somebody that played sparsely, not very much stuff. Just big, big right hand like Angus Young, kind of really big hand, which really meant something to me and Jason. So we were, we were destined to find somebody that didn't sound like anybody else that we worked with before. I think that was really good. Okay. You've worked with the greatest musicians, musicians in rock history. Yeah. A lot of great guitar players, a lot of you know, keyboard yeah. players, anything. So. You must be picky when it comes to choosing the right guitar player for your band, right? I mean, it, when, when Jason and I left Black Country, it was only a couple of months after we left, there were other guitar players, well-known 
famous musicians that would have played with Jason and I, but they were are really good friends, and they're really busy with their own bands. You know, I don't if if I told you that you know who they are. Yeah. So when I met Andrew and Jason and I played with Andrew that day, we just I, I said to, to Jason probably if we were to do something with this kid, he would be available to tour, go to Italy and Spain and Brazil and Portugal and Tokyo, anywhere, because he's not in the rock frame, he's not, he's not known. And when Coverdale joined Purple, he was not known. And, he, and, bon, and, and uh, Brian Johnson, they were not known guys, you know. So I think it was time for us to, to really be brave, be really, really brave and play with somebody that's really super talented and super ready and somebody that's not frightened of a big arena which Andrew is, is, is really really ambitious you know so it was important to work with somebody that was unknown that actually was not frightened to walk on the stage in front of 25,000 people it's really important it's kind of nice because you gave him an opportunity I mean, for him to yeah I mean he, but he's worthy I think when people, you know, the, the reason we didn't talk about this on the internet the last year, because if people, if we, Jason and Glenn are working with some unknown guy, everybody would have gone, what the fuck are you doing, man? You know, I didn't want to give them that opportunity. So when they hear this album, you know, they're hearing now Sweet Tea and Midnight Oil, and, and you've heard the album. When they hear the album, they won't think bad shit, because that they'll hear somebody that is really talented, you know. So, yeah, and everything sounds and I'm really so pro organic. I'm, I'm protective yeah. of him. He's a young guy. You know, and you know, uh, I, I kind of feel responsible for him. You know, I'm really glad that he's getting an opportunity, and he's not going to let us down. You know, he's really ambitious. I think when a, a football player takes a penalty, if they think they're going to miss it, they're going to miss. You know, but if you've got somebody on stage that's going to hit those notes every time, then it's going to happen. You know. Yeah, he's confident about himself. Yeah, himself. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And um, I've noticed that, you know, you come from Black Country Communion, which yeah. kind of Black Country is kind of where you grew up with yeah. Jason and England. And this album, this band, it's called California Breed, yeah. I mean, sort of tribute to the uh, band that adopted yeah. you, yeah. let's say, like that. Was it intentional to, to underline no, this man, transition? You know, you, know? For, you know, when I look back at Black Country Communion and the name that I came up with, you know, it was immediately a name because we wanted to pay respects to where Zeppelin and Purple were born, you know, and Ozzy and Tony and Geezer. It's this area of England, very industrial hard rock. So when this new band came about, we couldn't think of a name. We, we couldn't think of a name. And I look in my book of lyrics, I look at the, all the lines, and I came across a California breed acceleration in one of the songs. And I said, California breed means breed means brothers. And that's what we are, you know. And I'm a Californian, and Jason has got a house here. And Andrew was introduced by Julian Lennon in California. So it's really a real mm. feeling, you know. It, although the band is half British and New York, we're, ca we're California based. Andrew is actually now moving to California. You know, Jason spends a lot of time here. And uh, thanks to Julian, you know, it was made here. When did you move exactly to California? 1973. I mean, San Francisco has been a long time. And yeah. I mean, do you feel more Californian? I'm a Californian. Uh, oh, really? You know, I was, I'm very proud to be British, but I've lived in California most of my life. You know, it's, it's our, my home, my wife, my family, my friends. It's, it's really centered in this, in L.A. In L.A., yeah. But also, I mean, uh, musically, you've been uh, influenced a lot by American music. Yeah, so yeah. I guess that's yeah, know, yeah. a natural process. It was a natural process for you to move um, to America, right? I moved, you know, when I came here in 1970, I um, was listening to a lot of, you know, American music. Um, as Robert Platt was listening to blues, me and Coverdale were listening to soul music, you know. I think every artist of my generation, they will tell you they were listening to American music. Mm. They will tell you. They won't say they're listening to like other metal bands. They were because there wasn't any bands like that. We were listening to American Delta music or Detroit or Memphis, you know. And um, it rubbed off on me, you know. And I, I, 
I got to remember that I'm a British man, a white guy that loves black American music, that that understands it. But my global fan base, when I came back with rock music in black country, they welcomed me back and they said, we've been waiting for you. And I was very, very, very happy that they wanted me to come back to being the rock. Their rock guy, you know. And you've made a great comeback with Black Country and you and now you're, I mean, I think you're living a second youth, I would say. Yeah, musical. I think so, yeah. And your career is very interesting because we played, you played with huge artists, huge bands, and even when you went solo, and uh, you listened to your album, I mean, solo album, right. but they sound like a band, and that's not common. In, uh, a lot of musicians, yeah. when they do, they go solo, the album just like, sound like them. With your albums, it sounds like a proper band. Right. With you, of course, leading and writing most of the songs. I, I, I am. When Black Country came out, the band asked me to do talk to you in the press. And I went three times around the world talking every album. Very proud of Black Country. Very, very. And you know this. Yeah. And here I am again, coming now back to talk to you about. This new band I'm in, you know, I love this band. As I love Black Country, I love that band, and it's in my heart. I have nothing but love for that band. I have no bad feelings of Joe or any. I have nothing but love. And again, people say to me, "How can you leave that band and then do this?" And 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 we can believe you. I said, "Well, when you hear the album, you why know. believe you? Why, why well, you because how can somebody be in a black, a, a great band like Black Country then, and form another great band? <laughs> you know." How can a man who is 60 years old have success with Black Country, having to play hardly any shows, but the band was so successful in the studio, yeah. so everybody wanted to see Black Country, right? And then to be so disappointed when the band broke up, you know how upset I was. I wasn't angry, I was very hurt. How does a man that is so hurt pick himself up and, and form a new band with so much energy well, I wasn't going to go home and feel sorry for myself. I wasn't going to say to my wife, it's over. It's never over in life. Your life, your life, your life, anybody out there. It's not over. If we want it to be over, if we want to take the penalty kick and think we're going to miss it, we'll fucking miss it. I believe that our time on this planet is special. Every single person that sees this interview, everybody's life is important. We have to have great moments. I left Black Country and I formed California Breed and I knew the very first day it was going to be fantastic. Is this the greatest album of all time? I'm not sure, but it's the most energized, dangerous, soul-shaking, rib-breaking, heavy, rocking album I think I've ever made. I think since Burn, I think this has got more energy then I've ever, and from my age, I think it's remarkable to think there's a 23-year-old guy here and there's a 62-year-old guy, but you can't really hear the difference. I don't think you can hear 39 years difference. I can't. I can't. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I, and the reason I wanted to speak to you rather than talk on the phone is I want you, you to see me excited. I mean, I'm tired. You can see I was tired outside. <laughs> but when we get talking about this band, because it's how Italy is a very important market for me. Not, not just because I, I want to sell records, but I love Italy. I lived there in Rome in 1973. I love Italy. I, I just love it. But I want Italians to know that when they look at me and think of me, they should know that I have given 100% of my life to California Breed. This isn't a side project. This isn't Glenn Hughes and Jason having a little fun. This is, I want to kick some doors down. I want to smash some shit up, you know. Yeah. It's dangerous, and long may that continue. Yeah, that's, uh, that's nice. And uh, you've already planned some touring? We're going to start, um, I think it's safe to say, mm -hmm. it's to tell you now. Right as we speak to you now, um, the, it looks like we're going to start the tour in September in, in Europe. It'll mm -hmm. start in Europe. And we're, as we speak, the tour is being booked. And I can't wait. I mean, <laughs> you know. We're going to announce it soon. We're going to announce it soon. You know, it'll be announced very soon. You know, so we're very excited about that. Yeah. You just came back from London. 
you did some press there, but you also did the John Lord tribute. He did, man. Right? Yeah. How did it go? It was very special. They asked me to do it a year ago, and and, and this is when I knew we were California Breed were secretively planning to do an album. So I couldn't confirm until February, and so my manager said, "We can confirm you can be there now," because I was actually in England last week and Italy and, and I was in Spain, I uh, mean France and Germany. So we figured it's possible for me to attend. I didn't want to tell fans I'd be there, and when fans knew I was going to be there, there was a general feeling of oh, at least another guy in Mark III is going to be there. I'm not sure if David or Richie were asked. I'm not sure. I'm not, it's not my concern. My concern is I wanted to be there for John and his family. And you know, Ian Pace is a friend of mine. So I, I wanted to be there for them and for me. I wanted to sing this time around and burn uh, with Bruce and, and he keep on moving. And it was, it was really fun. It was a lot of fun. Hmm. In the, uh, what's your fondest memory of the very first encounter you had with John Lord? Because it seemed to have called you. Well, he came to my house. He left his home in London to, and come to, to my house to meet my, I'm their only child, there's no brothers. He came and put his arms around my mom and dad. John was a very loving, uh -huh. and he, he said, uh, everything's gonna, he's 11 years older than me, and he said, I'm, I'm gonna take care of your son. And he was like, ah, oh. you know, my parents knew that I was gonna be in good hands with John. John Lord was the reason I joined Deep Purple. Yeah. He was the man behind the wings that I, I flew out of, you know. So when John died, before he died, uh, a few years before, we became really good friends again, you know. We hadn't spoke for years and then we played together in 2009 in London and we called each other and spoke on the phone with David and, you know, and it was fantastic. And then he got sick, you know. Yeah, that was very sad. And, um of all, I mean, of all the great musicians you've worked with, what's, I mean, uh, which is the album you're most proud of? And uh, which is the album that you think was underrated? Well, they're both the same, really. Oh, really? Yeah, and I'll tell you why. And you know this because you know rock music. When I recorded Fused with Tony mm -hmm. in, in 2005, when we finished, re the moment we finished recording that album and we were going to set a tour, Sharon came with the offer to do another Sabbath reunion. So that happened exactly at the same time that Tony and I were going to go on a summer tour, you know? So the album, when, when we listen to the album Fuse, it's the most underrated album because no one really, really heard it because it wasn't promoted. Mm. The record company wouldn't promote an album that wasn't going to tour, and it's understandable. But when I listen to Fused, you know, and Ronnie loved, dear, he loved Fused. We talk about that album as like the most underrated and the most amazing record that no one ever, not really, world, it didn't hear it because it wasn't promoted properly. But Tony and I can still talk about Fused. Mm. We still talk about how great that album is. And uh, it's a remarkable piece of work. What do you think is the biggest misconception about yourself? People thought that I may have turned my back on rock music in, you know, when I got clean and sober, I um, was only interested in getting clean and sober. I wasn't thinking about making rock music. I just slowly did a blues album, then I did an album in Sweden, like an AOR album, then I kind of made a soul album, then an addiction kind of, it was always like one, different. It's, they've all been different, you know? And people were always saying, I wonder if Glenn will ever, ever focus again on real rock music and when I made Fuse with Tony that was a real rock album and I made Soul Mover which was kind of coming back. Soul Mover was great. Yeah it was a big album for me and but I think the mes misconception of Glenn Hughes is will, will he ever realize that the rock fans around the world want him to come back. I wasn't sure of that you know but as an artist and as a human being I wanted to make sure I'm okay with coming back to rock music. Can I can I make it believable? Can I write real rock music and look like a rocker and feel and smell like a rocker, which is really important, you know, it's like you have to be an actor. So when Black Country started, when I wrote that song Black Country, I realized I think I'm back. <laughs> so when I came back, I wasn't gonna take the rock hat off and put the American hat on. You know, so I want fans to know that I'm back, you know, I believe in rock music, 
Um, I believe in California Breed as being one of the greatest new bands of our time. Even if, if I wasn't in the band, I'd like to be in the band, you know? Oh, yeah. So, Jason played wonderfully. Andrew's a wonderful, new, talented guy. And it's given me, the older statesman, it's given, I mean, I'm good friends with Stephen Tyler, and we're both getting older now, but we have this energy, you know? This energy to still keep making, to, to keep reinventing, to keep rebranding. It's important. Yeah, and energy for even newer bands than the past. Yeah. And is there any new band out there that you like listening to, that you think has that element that California Breed has? Well, to be quite honest with you, I'm going to be very honest with you, I don't listen to a lot of new music because a lot of it, it it's it's a, a genre of rock that is sub, it's different to what I like, you know, so um, there's nothing, truly, nothing iconic today mm. like it used to be. Yeah, yeah. I think the last iconic band were like, I can't remember in 20 years. I, 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 no, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, not re I mean, I'm, I'm talking like, Huge, huge, yeah. Metallica kind of that. I mean, that's 30 yeah. years ago, man. It's so like so, you know, um, Kings of Leon kind of had a vibe on there, you know. So yeah, it's yeah, like, there are bands like Muse, but it's oh, Muse, uh, yeah. Muse are very. I, I'll tell you why I like Muse because they're very, very good musicians. Mm -hmm. The bass player and and the guitar player and the guy that yeah. writes very, very, very talented, mm -hmm. and they're not frightened. I think fear. You have to be fearless. When you put the paint on and you go on stage, when I've got that face on, you better get out of the way because I'm going to hit you with it. Because I'm I'm not the guy sitting here as a nice kind of. I'm very. Yeah, you put all your you know, soul into it. Yeah, yeah. That's what music misses today. I mean, we. I, I don't want it to be comfortable for you. I want it to be uncomfortable. I don't want you to walk on my stage because somebody's going to get hurt. You know, and California Breed is the kind of band that it's like Zeppelin and the Who. If you you you, you like if you walk on a stone stage, Keith Richards would hit you with a guitar. Yeah, you I never mean, knew what was going to happen. I, although I'm 62 years old, yeah. I kind of feel that way. You know, I'm 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 very un, I mean, you just never know what's going to happen. I just know I'm going to bring it. You know, I mean, it, it's going to be different every night, but it's going to be real. Yeah, it just came to my mind that you also share a producer with Rival Songs, which right, is good band. a uh, good, really good band. young band. Yeah. Really good band. Yeah. That's, that's, you know... You choose yeah. because of Rival Songs? I was hosting a party in LA three, three and a half years ago, and put my friend John Bates as fashion designer. And the guys in Rival Songs were there, and I didn't know who they were, but I had a radio show in England on Planet Rock, my own show on a Sunday, and they said, would you mind playing this song? And and I never heard them, but I like I liked the way they look, and they were really cool guys. Yeah. And I said, "I'll play Pressure and Time." I didn't know anything about it, and when I heard it, I went, "This is really good. I must call the guys." And then I played it, and then I said, "Hmm, that's a good production. Who produced this?" And I, 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 I put his name in my book, Dave Carr. This is like three years ago. So when California, when Black Country broke up, I went, "Who produced?" Oh, give him a call. Yeah, yeah, it was that simple. Yeah. And then I realized he recorded Shooter Jennings and a bunch of other national great artists that I really like, and it was, it was easy. So you recorded the album there in Nashville? Live, yeah. And how was the experience? And the, what, what was the input that they put in the album? A lot. I mean, he, he left us, we wrote all the songs, but he arranged, uh, rearranged a lot of it. I'd say he arranged all of it, really. I mean, I'm, I don't have a problem with somebody if you're going to produce my album, you're going to drive the car. I'm not going to drive the car, you're going to drive it. So I let him move things around in the song, change the arrangements. But his idea was to record me live. I didn't know I was actually singing live all the time, but he was. He had the guitar player and Andrew and Jason play live, and I was standing. But I did not know I was being recorded. But I was being recorded. So my very last question, we don't have much time, I guess, is... Um, What's your biggest goal nowadays as a musician? My biggest goal, it comes from the art of music itself, is, is to never do something that is not really me. I mean, I'm saying to you, I, and you, if you know my music, I never make the same album twice. Even with Black Country, they're all different albums, and the next one with California Beat is going to be a, a rock album. Or well, whatever I do next will be rock. 
but it's going to be music done in my terms, the way I feel. I'm singing about life. I don't sing about goblins and witches and dwarves. I sing about celebration, death, life, resentment, distrust, faith, hope, fear, all shit that happens to all of us. You know, I don't sing about anything that is not real. Very nice. And thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. With a pleasure. My pleasure. Pleasure is mine. Good. Cool. Thank Good. you. Thank, thank you. you.